Hello, my friends. Welcome into another episode of World Cup or Bust. Today, the World Cup draw. But first, we've got some CONCACAF Nations League to go over, as well as figuring out how to see the ability and potential of our players. Thanks to the comments, we're all learning. All right, so I had somebody leave a comment that said, hey, I've been dabbling around with international as well, and I can see the ability and potential. There's two ways, okay? So you can go to reports. Okay, it's still titled at the top. Ability and potential. Okay, so now we have stars. Fantastic. Okay, because I do have my own custom view. This is what I use for my squads and club and all that kind of stuff because I don't think that report section gives you enough detail. But it's still called the same thing. So I went, okay, let's go insert column. Assistant manager's opinion of this player's current ability, which is the exact same thing on the report. And it shows up. It's the exact same column. Why didn't it work before? Why is it working now? Is it because we didn't have an assistant manager at the time? Or did we? I can't remember. Did we did we hire that guy? Josh Wolf? No, he was here. That doesn't make any sense. And obviously right, be right below that on the, on the selector here, insert column, ability, there was another one for potential. So now I can remove these, but they're exactly the same. I have no idea what caused that. So anyway, the Nations League was interesting because you had to have a minimum squad size of now 18, I think it says right there, and a maximum squad size of 23, including three goalkeepers. So essentially 20 outfield players and three goalkeepers, which seems a bit aggressive. But we, it, so it kind of forces you to think, okay, I don't have 46 players I have to select here, so who would I actually select? So this is kind of how we lined up with Daryl DK and Jordan uh, Sibichu, Pefo, whatever his name is, Conrad De La Fuente as a wing option with Tim Weah, but obviously Reyna, Pulisic, Aronson as starters in the attacking midfield. Keaton Parks got the pick over the likes of like Kellen Acosta and Darlington Nagby just because of his form. Yunus Musa, George Bello, Reggie Cannon as backup uh, wingback or fullback options. I did bring in Felipe Sandler, who was the Dutch player that we wanted to cap tie. He is now without club, which is great. So he got cut by Man City. So he's in the mix of trying to find a new gig. Again, he's not going to be playing, you know, in the World Cup necessarily. But, you know, we want to cap tie a player. Chris Richards. I brought Sean Johnson in because Matt Turner is in terrible form. Again, Bill Hamid got the start because we didn't need Zach Steffen. And it was interesting because Zach Steffen came to me and was like, why wasn't I picked? And I said, bro, you need to be playing regularly. He was like, fair. So I'm kind of curious, is something going to happen with Zach Steffen? He's not listed. He's not got anybody wanting him. So he's not, you know, um, got anybody asking for him. And he must not be stirring up enough trouble right now. It's only July 9th in the game, 2022. So there's still time. I'm really trying to push him to go play someplace because... Bro, you can't be coming to the World Cup and not be playing. Come on. Obviously, you see the back line here. Dust with Robinson on the left. John Brooks and CCV got the nod over some of the other players just because he was more Matt Sharp, which isn't saying a lot, um, and has had a better season with Celtic than elsewhere. He is also wanted. No, he was on loan to Celtic, and now he's come back. Um, and now there's some other clubs interested, so maybe he'll get a move. Weston McKinney, Tyler Adams, and the like. Okay, here's an example. Now I'm on the national pool screen. It's the, the same squad view that we just modified, and it's still blank. So let me try changing it. This time it didn't fix it. Like, I can't even add. It is the column. It is the correct column because it only, if you get to this screen and it only gives you one other option on that menu, there were three. One of those is ability, one is potential ability, and um, one is current ability in the selected role. So, like, the fact that the other two are missing, it's these are the other two. So... You know, like, I guess you could, again, you could go find other screens here, but it just, to me, doesn't make any, like, why do I have to go to reports to see the ability and the potential of my players? And I can't even see all of them. Like, that's just bizarre to me. In the Nations League, we are currently top, but we have not officially qualified because we haven't played three games. We've played two of the games. Um, we are even on points with Trinidad and Tobago. So we've, we've played each of them once and won. And Trinidad has played Bermuda twice and won. Our next game that's in September will essentially be the decider, right? Like, oh, my, not the... Yeah, the decider, pretty much. Um, so we play Trinidad next. We'll theoretically win and then be able to move on past that. Um, it's gone well. 5-0. They had a man sent off in the 33rd minute, which was lovely stuff. 
Um, and then Bermuda actually gave us the game. Now, to be fair, we had rotated. Again, Bill Hamid uh, came in between the six. Not a heavy rotation, actually, because each of those, it was weird. Like, we didn't have the opportunity to set another friendly. So it's like we called all these players in for a single game rather than, like, a game and a friendly. The game didn't even give me a chance to set a friendly, which I think is annoying. So actually, we went with the with the best squad we had available. We did cap tie George Rodriguez, who is a goalkeeper that has some potential. Um, he has no other nationality, but I just want to go ahead and get that taken care of. Um, and then Matko uh, Mihailovic, who has Argentinian and Croatian. So he's now cap tied to us. At one point a couple years ago, he was looking really good, and then he kind of fell off with, uh, I thought it was with Chicago, but apparently it was with Montreal. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll, we're doing okay. So again, the highlight, we play Trinidad, Tobago, and Bermuda. Now, two games together in, uh, not the next episode, I'm not going to show you those, but we should be able to get through and win our group in the Nations League. And then we have set up friendlies. If you can see this, we don't know our World Cup games yet, but Czech Republic and Ireland, because come on, Ireland. Um, and I just want to point out, arranged friendly, right? This is so broken. There's not even a date anywhere on here. It's completely blank. Until, like, you scroll way down. And then it's like, oh, this is actually March 22nd. You could set a friendly date there. So, again, it just it just is broken. But let's do the draw. Let's see who we get. Okay. All your first seed teams, you can't see them. The ones behind me are Argent Argentina, Brazil, France, Qatar, <laughs> Belgium, Italy, and Spain. Um, what We are th a third seed with the likes of Colombia, Morocco, Senegal, Sweden, Japan, Nigeria, Serbia. So we are in the third bucket. Let's just go ahead and get those second buckets. Wait, we already got picked. Is Oh, it goes backwards. It goes fourth seed, then third seed. Okay, that's curious. And, okay, our options here. Belgium, England, Italy, Brazil, France, Spain. All of those are terrible in your group. England. Oh, the content. Um... Let's just take a full look at these now. Jamaica, Netherlands, Qatar, Senegal. Okay, that looks like a relatively easy group to me. Argentina, Austria, Denmark, and Japan. That looks more difficult. To be fair, we have Angola, but Croatia and England. I mean, we are, I think, going to struggle to get out of the group stage. Um, Australia, Colombia, Germany, Italy. Tough group. Uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Serbia, Spain, Uruguay, Belgium, Morocco, Portugal, Syria, Chile, France, Nigeria, South Korea... Brazil, Iran, Mexico, and Sweden are your World Cup groups, my friends. Let's hit continue and see where we end up on the scheduling aspect. All right, here we go. Let's find out what the schedule looks like. We have to get a result against England or Croatia to have a stand of a chance of getting past the group stages. Oh. Average temperature around 82 this time of year with average highs in the region of 95 and average lows of 69 degrees Fahrenheit, which is toasty toasty especially if you have like a noon kickoff surely they're not gonna do that surely they're not gonna do that let's find out we play angola first get in and then england and croatia my goodness my friends i think that's gonna be like we'll probably separate those out because i would like to actually see if we can get out of the group so we might do extended highlights on those games to see if we can you know finagle things enough to somehow get through i'm again i'm not gonna show you trinidad tobago and bermuda because theoretically it should go fine right all right, my next question for you, and that's what I'm going to leave you with, is how would you realistically set up to play against those teams, right? Like, let's just, let's just, let's just go back here. So Angola, 101st. Theoretically, we should be able to get a result there. England, fourth in the world. Minor problem. Croatia, 14th. Just to remind you where we sit, we are currently 17th. So we're, you know, but again, we've been playing the likes of Trinidad, Tobago. You know, like, in fairness, we got results against Mexico, Costa Rica, and Jamaica, Okay. Jamaica being, you know, 33rd in the in the world um, and in the World Cup and obviously Mexico in 12th and in the World Cup. So, like, we, we're not, you know, like, we got a chance. But how should we set up tactically? Because, again, I'm going back to we did play attacking Tiki Taka in the Nations League. I'm not saying we would necessarily do that. But I was trying to get Aronson more involved because um, he's, he's pretty darn good. He's better as, a like, a central midfielder but not as a box-to-box. -box. And so it's like, okay, what if we put Christian on the right and Reyna, who is more naturally a left-inverted winger rather than, like, a right winger. Um, it's like, put Pulisic wherever. He's going to cause problems. 
swing Reyna out onto the left, Aronson in between, and then Adams and McKinney or Musa and Adams or Musa and McKinney can hold down the midfield with Destin Robinson on the wing backs, Brooks and CCV. Or, I mean, we have all kinds of options um, at center back, right? Not in the squad. So is it really going to make me, can I see? Oh, I can't see all the players from a, from a, a depth standpoint, but you got CCV, you got Matt Miaz, got Aaron Long, uh, Miles Robinson. Now, the reason I hadn't picked Miles Robinson, let me show you that, is at the time it seemed better to leave him at his club, right? And that's what I would, I, I, how I like to play FM is, you know, let's be realistic about this. He at the he didn't even have the full nine starts in one sum at the time, but a 6.66 is not the greatest at the time. It was like much worse than that. And so it's like, let's leave him in Germany to kind of like settle in because, you know, he moved from Atlanta, you know, so he's, 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 he's got to like learn German and like fit into his squad long term for his career. And so that's why I didn't pick him up. So I'm just thinking about some of the other players here, right? So we got Walk, Walker Zimmerman we could call in. Owen Otisoe, who's getting there from a, from a capability standpoint. Um, you know, there's other options and you could scroll these through these as you see fit. I mean, Tim Ream, I think has retired. So I don't know if it, yeah, he, he's retired from football completely, which is kind of shocking because he was having a good season in France, but he was like, I'm out. So we don't get to see Tim Ream anymore. I mean, that's, that's kind of grasping at straws to be like, Hey, Tim Ream needs to come into the squad. But obviously we would call up Zach Steffen. I'm just worried about, you know, his playing time. We got some other options, but if this was like the main squad, give or take some of the rotational sub players, again, I'm not saying Hamid's going to start. How would you line up in the World Cup? We've played well playing Tiki Taka. Um, I actually enjoyed this. Again, obviously, Aronson wouldn't be here. We could bring in another center back, and, you know, if we needed to try more control, you know, just to be interesting. But if we're trying to get out of that group, oh, it's not even going to show it here, huh? We're going to try to get out of this group here. What's the best way to do it? I'm looking for suggestions, my friends. So hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. Again, my goal this year is to get to 10,000 subscribers. I'm curious what your thoughts are. If you want, also, if you want to go see, you know, highlights of some of the Trinidad and Bermuda games, I'd be glad to do that. I just don't think with the amount of time left in the beta that that makes the most sense. I'm more interested in, like, let's get to the World Cup and see what happens um, and, and kind of take things from there. I do want to say a massive shout out to everybody that supports me on Patreon. The names that are about to pop up behind me on the end screen. Or not behind me. I won't be here, but the end screen will be here and their names will be here. Some of those folks are coming up on four years of support, which is insane. If you want to support the channel, you can have a YouTube member or a Patreon member. The links to those are in the description below. Or you can buy FM22 using my discount code to get 19% off up until I think it's November 9th. Like I wouldn't be pushing it. Maybe November 8th. But there's a 10% off discount everywhere in the world. And then if you use my link, you can use code gray here. You got to make sure you use code gray here to get the extra 10% off. And that 10% off 10% equals 19%. So if you want to do that, all that stuff is in the description below. Let's go play the World Cup. Yay, England. Oh, no. Uh -huh.